They want to take control. They want to rule the world. Carrying on as if they own the universe. They put human rights last and war first. But we must have no fear for their nuclear energy. For there's one more powerful and mighty. And he has dominion over all. We have to answer when he calls. Because there is one, one superpower. It only have one, one superpower. And he's the master, the creator of the heaven and the earth. Whoa, whoa, whoa.
A pleasant good morning, ladies and gentlemen, residents of Embakade and environs. Good morning to all of our distinguished guests. All protocols observed, inclusive of the COVID protocols. My name is Roxy Singh, a member of the community, and I am privileged to be asked to MC the launch of Healing Conversations in our communities, which was founded by Mrs. Madonna Doyle. The concept is to foster healing conversations within and among communities. I will also like to inform you all that we are presently live on WAC 90.1 FM along alongside all of their live links online. Getting right into this morning's proceedings, ladies and gentlemen, please let us all stand for the national anthem of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. standing as we have the opening prayer by Apostle Reynold Mondesi of the Original Intent Ministries for Embakade. Good morning everyone and thank you. Let's, as you said, let's remain standing and let's just pray. Father, this morning we just thank you for this event. We should already your past and soon it will be ours. We pray today that everything will be done in decency and in order. We pray to you that this venture which I've started will continue because you gave us dominion over the earth and you said we are supposed to cultivate it. We are supposed to manage it, subdue it, have authority over it. And even so today, we thank you for everything that's already been done in this venture and what is yet to happen because it's already our past and soon it will be ours. But at the day we say, let your kingdom come and let your will be done in this event in this meeting today, just as it is done in the heavens, we take authority over the elements because you gave us authority over all of earth. And we speak to the clouds today that the clouds remain all bright. Everything that is dark will be removed from this place. And Father, yes, we'll have brilliant sunlight. We'll have a wonderful day today. And we'll know that you are indeed the sovereign Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus, amen and amen. Thank you. Amen and amen. Thank you, Apostle Mondesi. You may have your seats, ladies and gentlemen. At this time, we would like to show a presentation on the vision and lead up to today, entitled Mary, the Journey. Can we have a round of applause, please? Thank you.
Hi, good day. My name is Ariel Hansen. Hi, Ariel. I'm going to explain your involvement in this program. You mean I am the parent of one of the students and I'm also a member of the launch committee. It's important to me because of the The way it has the community involved, the different children, young adults, young males from different parts of the same area that are actually getting to know each other and come together and meet. Also, how it's drawing us, the community together, the different parents are also involved. So it's kind of a networking to get to know your neighbors. And the third thing that it's doing for me is also putting Embakade or going to put Embakade out there for a different reason other than what it's known for. We recognize the transformative power of communication. And just like Jesus is an encounter with a woman, there is my husband. We too seek to adopt this model of a multi layered, unique, and interested because of the youth and the whole of the youth and the whole of the youth around. And what the involvement is really, really, really Picture interesting. Picture a thriving community um, my stepson as with well. healthy relationships. Well, they had other Nurture true communication and planting that focus and on mending, planting really restoring, to be and transforming situations that have been so broken between problem. individuals, within families and groups. That's it. Today. But what makes us different? What can you expect of us? Compassion? I became involved in this program for we multiple reasons, like a blend of curiosity, I say, with um, the, the opportunity to learn a new skill, like, for example, agriculture, etc. Free and po positive, um, you know, is, is a positive activity, and also, well, when I check uh, my schedule, I had the free time which enables me to do so. Uh, my name is Keegan Perny, and I live in the Bakken the foundation builds on earlier accomplishments such as small well, workshops for communities, at first I was just looking to diversify my NGOs. portfolio. But this work from you know, like working wise, is our most ambitious to have like another talent or After a, a sideline job to just make the extra money. Dialoguing and the and program itself seems very interesting to me. We have developed it involves a peers from within the area and other neighbors as well, and also going to network and communicate with Mary my neighbors King. and peers. Mary because we, you know, try to change experience God, the stigma of what's and going on in our community. This vision is being expressed through training in attitudes and mindset, in vocational skills and spiritual formation, meaning applying biblical principles to daily living, to work, and to their interactions with one another. Here for you to see is the harvest of seasoning, time, side, shadow belly, and parsley, and celery. But more than that, this harvest is the culmination of the planning and strategizing that I have shared and, before, and, up, so and the work yeah, of 15 yeah, young men and their families. These 15 young men have become the foundation of this community transformation. Bright Weeks, Betrayal Daniel, example, Carlon Valley, Fian Makano, Mikkel Bascom, Keegan Veronique, Andel Moranzi, Jarrell Morris, Renesu Wilson, Nikosi Beckles, Cameron Bacchus, Jelani Morrison, Shaquille George, Jenki Pato and Gabriel Simpson under the leadership of Michael Jack. He planted out the first of the bios guided by Mr. Shalim Shah of the Ministry of Health, having sincerely approved the initiative of the Ministry of Health and encouraged by the community collaborators like John Shaw, Michael Joseph, Apostle Ronald Ramsey, and Mr. Tommy Joseph. Many persons 
have come together to demonstrate what we see today. The power of leadership, vision, service, collaboration, and communication in transforming a community. The journey continues. We know that more residents have signaled their interest to become involved. The next phase is coming. To neighbors, businesses, other organizations in South, the Foundation for Healing Conversations is a non-profit organization registered in 2016 that seeks to adopt healing conversations to transform communities. We recognize the transformative power of communication and just like Jesus' encounter with a woman at the standby, we too seek to adopt this model of a multi-layered, unique and practical communication approach called a healing conversation. What does that look like? Picture a thriving community with healthy relationships, nurtured through communication encounters that focus on mending, restoring, and transforming situations that have been broken between individuals, within families and groups. That's it. But what makes us different? What can you expect of us? Compassion, service, and... What a wonderful presentation. That deserves another round of applause. Come on, louder. Wow. So at this time, we would like to welcome our local government counselor, Mr. Nigam Joseph, to bring greetings. Thank you. Thank you, Roxy. Deputy Mayor, Dr. Ferry Hussein, Ms. Donna Doyle, CEO of Foundation of Healing Conversations, members of the board of the Foundation of Healing Conversations, members of San Fernando West Executive, members of the community, my community of Mbakade, members, listeners on WAC, Members of the media, good morning. Normally when your MP, the Attorney General, calls you four o'clock in the morning, it's normally for a fire. But this morning when he called, he said he couldn't make it and I got me have to go. This is the importance of this program to our Member of Parliament, the Honorable Faris Rowley. It's so strange that the launch of this program kind of coincides with Diwali. And because I know from my understanding, Lord Rama was in the wilderness for 12 years before he defeated evil. And I know Miss Doyle came to me about two, three years ago from me, she went to the mayor. Then when I went to the MP's office, I saw Miss Doyle work after she put everything in, then COVID came. Ms. Doyle not taking no for answer. So I know she'll go door to door here to make sure this program is successful. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Madonna Doyle. And again, as I said, we are a multicultural nation. So again, on Diwali, I know the Hindus pray to Lord Ganesh, their Lord of Wisdom. And that's what we're here to do today, to gather wisdom, knowledge. Let us continue to grow. That's the only way this community can grow and can prosper. Same thing with Diaz. Diaz are to guide the Lord into your house. I believe this foundation is here in Mbakade to guide the community. Let us work together. Same way, Mr. Doyle. Working with me, the mayor and the MP. She is here. We can help guide this community. I fed up a tea and tech tell me, I'm not going in there without police. This is not a at risk community. I was now telling the deputy mayor when he was given out on the NAR, his doctors, lawyers, nurses, teachers were given these properties. This is the kind of community that we can become again. As your local representative, what I hear day to day, 
or your concerns. And people talk about employment, they're looking for employment. And I think what they need, honestly, is vision and guidance. Because there's a lot of opportunity here. The Deputy Mayor will talk a little bit, there's a dog pong opening. And you'll see what, what kind of employment you'll have there. But think about it. If after they kill the dogs, what are they going to do? You could have an incinerator to burn the dogs. That could be a sideline. You, you could, if you could, uh, if you could do pottery, you could make the clay pots. They ha you just need guidance. You need to open your eyes and see the vision. Again, and as I have to give the deputy mayor her kudos, just in Wednesday meeting, the CEO was talking about projects, and I was telling him, telling him I have to applaud him because he carried the city corporation in a more business directive. And he said, no, no, All those were the deputy mayor initiatives. So ladies and gentlemen, later when you'll hear the deputy mayor, she's a little small in size, but she's she big up here. And again, the conversation for healing. Conversation you're thinking is only talk, but when you hear Miss Doyle, you know it's plenty substance, plenty action coming behind it. I was here a couple months ago, maybe three months ago, and now from where I stand, I can smell the, the fruits of, this, of that project. Um, and I happen to know somebody who has a grocery in Koki who might be able to take some of the produce off your, off, off your hands. I don't know if it's this shipment or the next. But I, I know he's a good, goodish fella. Right? Um, as I said, I got a call at 4 o'clock this morning, so I do have a written speech. But I don't think any representative who comes into Embakada should have a written speech. That person should be able to just talk because this is their community. This is a community that will be great again. Ms. Doyle, well, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for your, your years in the wilderness <laughs> trying to help us. Ms. Doyle, well, thank you. He Healing Foundation, thank you. Mr. Ibo, I know we have some work to do. But again, thank you for guiding because honestly, when talking to people that come to my office, especially the youth, that they don't feel the elders in the community want to share knowledge and guide. And when I watch you and Nigel, I know that is not so. Again, thank you all very much and thank you for allowing me to be here. Thank you very much, Councillor Nigam Joseph. Very active in the area. At this point, ladies and gentlemen, we have with us Ms. Glenda Borrell, Agricultural Assistant 3 for Victoria County, coming to bring you some greetings. Let's hear it for Ms. Borrell. Thank you. Good morning, Deputy Mayor, Chairperson of the Foundation, Foundation of Healing Conversations, Ms. Madonna Doyle, um, Ms. Madonna Sampson Doyle, members of the Board of Healing Conversations, members of the community, listeners of the general public. Good morning. I am grateful for this opportunity to bring greetings on behalf of the Ministry of Agriculture, Lands and Fisheries Regional Administration South. The Ministry of Agriculture aims to foster the sustainable use and, and conservation of agricultural and fishery resources, imparting appropriate science-based technologies and management practices that enable producers to achieve relative profits and consumers to secure food nutrition requirements. This project fully embraces this mandate 
as it aims to introduce the young participants to, pro to the production of seasoning to supplement their food dietary requirements and food bill, and also earn them an income utilizing the resources available to them. As we know, land space is a very challenging resource in the urban areas. So the use of this pot and trough culture aims to allow these students or these participant, participants to engage in meaningful agriculture. They were also introduced to the technologies of hydroponics that would allow them another avenue to develop economic viability and profitable enterprises using their limited land space. Now, the ministry was approached some time ago by Ms. Doyle to assist with the agricultural component of this program. The director of the regional administration south, Mr. David Ram, and the deputy director of the region fully endorsed the ministry's participation. Ms. Doyle can attest to the fact that she was supported at the highest level and also at the county level where she held discussions with the agricultural officer one, Ms. Sati Ganga Pasad, who was integral in providing the support, leadership, and guidance needed to successfully implement a program of this kind. Commendations also have to be said today for Mr. Salim Shah, who is one of County Victoria's esteemed extension officers who worked assiduously with the, stu with the participants of this program. <laughs> Diligently providing technical and practical knowledge to, to ensure that this program was successfully implemented and bore fruit providing them with skills that hopefully would ensure a better success of any independent ventures that these young people choose to pursue as they move along with this program. It is said that the future of our society is the young people. Today, half of the world's population is under the age of 27. Young, peoples are, young people, persons, are the ones that determine our future and will define what the world looks like tomorrow. The young people of today face many burdens, and we, somet we sometimes forget that employment is also one of the burdens that, at, or challenges that they face. However, these young people are pe persons are at the forefront of change and innovation in this digital age. The ministry focus on young agricultural um, entrepreneurs and the uphill battle that some of these young farmers may face has led to the collaboration between the Ministry of Agriculture, Land and Fisheries and the Ministry of Youth Development and National Service. This would have led to the formation of a program called Youth Fast Track Agro Incentive Program. It was implemented to provide financial support to alleviate difficulties experienced by young food producers in accessing grants and incentives and subsidies offered by the Ministry of Agriculture. More information on this program can be gained from the ministry's website, but it must be said that no, no, the knowledge of land access and its tenureship being a problem to the members of this community, agro-processing or value-added activities are also suited as potential enterprises for accessing this grant. Again, I say thank you to Ms. Doyle for the initiative that she took in, in setting up this foundation that targeted the youths use of the Embakadeh area. And we must say that she has tried to improve the opportunities 
and develop the life skill of the young people who have participated in this program. And again, we commend Miss Madonna um, Samson Doyle. So on behalf of... <laughs> So again, on behalf of the Ministry of Agriculture, we take this opportunity to commend the young people of the community of Mbakadir. <laughs> and their parents who made an effort to participate in this agricultural project. And look forward, the ministry look forward to any further assistance, the regional administration south We thank you, and you are most welcome, Ms. Borrell. Thank you for taking your time to be here with us today. As we move forward, we'd like to present another video clip on the results of the intervention to date, entitled, Mary, the Impact. Good day, my name is Ariel Hansen. Hi Ariel, can you explain your involvement in this program, Healing Conversations in Embarcade? I am the parent of one of the students and I'm also a member on the launch committee. Why is this vision, Mary, important to you? It's important to me because of the stigma that the area has in Embarcade and I would really love for it to be seen in a different light. Okay. What are the top three things that you have that have impressed you so far about this program? The way it has the community involved, the different children, young adults, young males from different parts of the same area that are actually getting to know each other and come together and meet. Also, how it's drawing us, the community together, the different parents are also involved. So it's kind of a networking to get to know your neighbors and the third thing that it's doing for me it's also putting Embakade out going to put Embakade out there for a different reason other than what it's known for what benefits are you seeing so far with your son or spouse who's involved in the program actually there are my husband there is my husband and my stepson and there my husband is really interested because of the youths and he is one of those who like to help the youths around and the involvement is really 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 interesting. Uh, my stepson as well, he, well they had other options besides of planting and the planting really turned out to be a success. Good. So what's your name? Callan. Hey Callan. Good day. Why did you become involved in this program? healing conversations in our communities? I became involved in this program for multiple reasons. It's like a blend of curiosity, let's say, with um, the opportunity to learn a new skill, like, for example, agriculture, etc. Free and po positive, um, you know, is a positive activity and also, well, when I check uh, my schedule, I had the free time which enabled me to do so. Okay, so, so tell us your name. Uh, my name is Keegan Vernick and I live in the Mbakade community. Why did you become involved in this program, Healing Conversations in our community? Well, at first I was just looking to diversify my portfolio from, you know, like working-wise, you always need to have like another talent or 
a sideline job to just make the extra money and the program itself seemed very interesting to me as it involved uh, peers from within the area and other neighbors as well and I also want to network and communicate with my neighbors and peers because we you know try to change the stigma of what's going on in our community so what's your name right all right all right right what do you do for a living i work construction at a, from a private contractor right on here nice nice how has this program helped you to date well to say i was not really a people person and it helped me really open up i should say and what would you say has caused you to become involved in this program? Well, basically, it come and drop in real lap, so we gotta, we gotta make something of it. Mm. Mm. Dwight, you know you're not getting money from this program, right? So why have you stayed? Right, for example, you went to school all your life, you didn't get money for that. Mm. It's our goal you're trying to achieve. Come and drop in relapse, so we gotta, we gotta make something of it. Mm. Mm. Dwight, you know you're not getting money from this program, right? So why have you stayed? Right, for example, you went to school all your life, you didn't get money for that. Mm. It's our goal you're trying to achieve. Wow, those youths are encouraging. I'm seeing some of you here and I'm very proud of you all. Give yourselves a round of applause. Wow. All right, so bringing to the forefront to enlighten us with a presentation is none other than the CEO and founder of the Foundation for Healing Conversations. Let's hear it for Mrs. Madonna Doyle. Thank you, our chairperson, Roxy, Roxy Singh. And you know, relationships are so important. I got to know Roxy through Ibo. And she was doing a song and a series of songs for um, an online program that my company produced. And it was really, really tremendous. And she didn't charge me a pong and a crown. And then when we couldn't, um, when we Sorry, Ivo. Thank you. And then at the last minute when the first M MC couldn't make it, just last night, I called Roxy and I told her, and she said, yes. <laughs> Thank you. So let me um, share my heart with you and share some thoughts. And I'm speaking to us here as well as the national community. And because WAC is streaming abroad, we have a... Uh, a diaspora community abroad. So I want to speak to all of us, right? About a month ago, we were praying. And by the way, every Saturday, we pray for Embarcade. <laughs> and every Wednesday, when we meet, we pray for Embarcade. And our private times, we prayed for Embarcade. So this is really a spiritual journey. And about a month ago, when we were praying, um, the Lord impressed upon me an agricultural principle that is very relevant to what is happening today. And the principle is, um, somebody sows, somebody waters, but God gives the increase. What we are experiencing here is as a result of the work of many people who have gone before. Many, many years, many groups, many, many people who have prayed, many, um, like even the police youth club and so on. So... We are building on the effort, we are building on the legacy, we are building on the energies and the commitment of a lot of people who have gone before. They have sown, many have watered, and this is part of the harvest. Not they were all harvest, this is part of the harvest, and God gives the increase. So all glory goes to God. The fact that you all came on board, the fact that, I mean, Roxy said yes last night, the fact that the MP call you and give God the glory.
Come on. Hey. So we need to be thankful. And you know, one of the pains I have about Trinidad and Tobago, we're not a very grateful society. But we want to cut that culture. We have a bunch of young men who are really, really tremendous. And we want to lead this nation on being thankful and being grateful for what has gone before. I want to take um, this opportunity to share a bit of my story with you, and you will see why. Um, I grew up, I was born in Mount Mariah Road, San Fernando, up on that hill. And I grew up in Marabella, number 14 Teresa Street, Marabella. And mommy and everybody still living at number 11 Teresa Street, Marabella. And our house was eight buildings away from the Pentecostal Church, Marabella Pentecostal Church. So you know them parents send you to Sunday school. You had no choice. And I was confirmed in the Anglican faith. I went to Marabella Girls Anglican. And I worked as a broadcaster. In 1980, a group of us, four of us actually, some of you may know, um, Hal Graves, Mark David, Che, well, he, he was Ernest at the time, Ernest Rodriguez, and myself. We came together to form My People Incorporated and transformed theater and gospel in theater. We, we wrote our scripts, we acted, we produced, we sold the tickets, we performed, and entered into the National Drama Festival just declaring the kingdom and the relevance of the kingdom of God to the social issues of the time. And that was quite transformative. And then later on in my life, I tell people I've been a Christian since Adam was in Pampas, eh? so you're going to hear a long story. But later in my life, specifically in 1992, I started to attend San Fernando Open Bible Church. And that is where I think part of my defining experience on leadership took place. About 200 young people. Many of them look bored, half bored, not interested and so on. And of course from a, a background of theater and passion and I, I learned to cook in Sunday school. So I didn't understand this kind of boredom with life. No. And I said, okay, we have to do something about them young people. And the pastor asked me to lead youth ministry. And I want to tell you, some of these young people, you know them. You know, you would know, Car um, not Carlin, Carlin, your cousin, Ansel Valley. You would know Nicholas Doyle, Luke Kwamina. Those are the young people who, oh, you know, they were kind of whatever. But right now, and even Linda and Rennie was part of that group. I am sharing this with you to let you know that no one person can make the kind of impact that we are experiencing today. It's a culmination of sowing and watering. What I, what, when God said to me, okay, I, I needed to go, I, actually, I didn't know it was in Bacchus. I, I had a vision. And those of you who know my journey, I don't play when God speaks. And I, I know since I'm small, he, he speaks through dreams and vision. And he gave me this vision. And I'm walking towards south, and the tower of the first church of the open Bible is to my left. But he was sending me to a place on the right. And I didn't know. But in that dream, people were on the seashore. And it's only months after I found out that Embakade meant waterfront. To cut a long story short, we engaged in healing conversations. That means we listened. The first thing, listen. And not just superficial listening. It's called listening with a heart. And there's a lot of scientific evidence and there is um, spiritual evidence that there is what you call a brain in the heart, a cluster of neurons and so on. So the heart has both long-term and short-term memory. So when we listen with the heart, we're connecting with the character of people. And that's one of the fundamental, the, the, the basis of what we're doing here, listening with the heart. And as Nigam was saying, Local government councillor Nigam Joseph was saying, it is not just old talk, but talk that must generate results. So we listen with the heart and we listen for the pain points, but more importantly, we listen for the dreams and the aspirations of people. So what has emerged, person said, I remember Nigel was saying, listen, employment is the issue. People need jobs. Them young people need jobs. I said, Nigel, I'm not into jobs, I'm into business, entrepreneurship, because we need to work our way out of depending on people for jobs, and we need to make our own future. 
And then when we started to talk and we administered a survey to see where, what are some of the opportunities for, for business, agriculture, music production, uh, came up, I think, air conditioning, um, a couple more things. But we found that the most cost effective, the cheapest, the quickest, the most visible was the agriculture. And what is interesting is that agriculture began to bubble up on top of the needs for our society. When COVID came, I said, eh, eh. and local government council, I said, you know, Madonna not taking no for answer. COVID or no COVID. When God talk, we got to answer. So COVID didn't take God by surprise. He knew. But what we've got to show that as the old people say, come hell or high water, we are obeying what God sent us to do. Yeah? So we met online. And I know it has been long. We meet every week on a Wednesday. And to be honest, I know we're tired. But we, this is an important milestone for us to show that the investment in time and effort and energy has borne fruit. We started the training on the 14th of July online. And those guys, Wednesdays, they're there, 3 to 5 o'clock. And then when some of them, their phones gone through. Lost their phone. No data on the phone. Then Pastor Mondesir opened up his space and only a couple showed up and so on. But they, 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 they stayed the course until they couldn't stay no more. And then when Salim started the agriculture, man, they wanted to come outside and mix soil and plant and so on. So the meeting shifted to Saturdays. And that was really awesome. I mean, I'm seeing Latrell and Dwight and they, they're playing the music and they're mixing the soil and they're dancing. Work became a pleasure, a delight. And we've been meeting under the umbrellas on Saturdays. And Salim started this 8.30 something. And we, meet, we reach here for 8.30 and they're there. The first day I remember when we came down and they weren't there. We did a practical exercise about the importance of time. And those guys, those guys are awesome. They are so punctual. Give it up to them. And the first harvest was in September. So the September the 18th, I think, the first harvest. And what was so touching is that the members, the neighbors, the relatives of Embakade came out by the produce, encouraged us. So we really want to thank the residents of Embakade. Come on. We want to demonstrate how grateful we are for the support that they've given us. Look, Mr. Prem, right in the back there. Mr. Prem became the supervisor of the project. Mr. Prem behind there. And, and this is the foundation for healing conversations. And as I share with you, the first thing we do is listen, but listen with the heart. And then out of the listening came the design. The design, so that we could deliver on their dreams. The design involved, one, the training in attitude and mindset transformation. And that used to take place on Wednesdays. And then the vocational skills, which is where the agricultural component came on, and spiritual formation. We have some powerful sessions under the umbrella, which is just a couple blocks away. And, and with spiritual formation, they can connect some spiritual principles to the work of their hands. When we talk about sowing and reaping and, 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 and obstacles, they could see in the barrels what we're talking about. So they've made that connection. True or false? Talk to me. True. Let me give you all one example. And, and, and there's a parable. There's a biblical parable about what happens, you know, sometimes when you have obstacles. There's a parable about a sower sowing some seed and then somebody coming in night and sow some wrong thing. We had an experience when after we planted and thing, they call on the chat, lots of chatter, something happened. Like the plants, well, the old people say kilkete. It turned out that apparently some cat went among the seedlings and dig up the seedlings and we didn't know what to do. And people start to say, do this, do that. Put, um, what was the chemical? <laughs> Pepper and so on. Because they had to get rid of the cat. Because now this is our investment. 
And then we settled on putting some um, BRC. I think we put some BRC on it to prevent the cats and, you know. But that showed something. That showed ownership. That showed commitment. That showed passion and uh, um, resilience because we had to bounce back from that destruction, mini destruction. We wouldn't tell you what one person suggested about kicking the cat, right? That is between us, right? <laughs> But, but, but what we are beginning to see is fruit. Not just the physical fruit, but the behaviors and attitude. Some of the training that we engaged in were teamwork and communication. And wow. And they're able to see, because they liked the, 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 um, the example of the ants. And I found that was a good one. When you ask, okay, teamwork is the story of the ants that come together. So I want to commend these young men to the community of San Fernando. They are worth your investment. They have been committed. They didn't get a cent from this program. No stipend, we have no money for stipend, but they've stayed the course. I've seen them and, and under Salim's guidance showing us how to harvest shadow belly, how to harvest celery, the timing for it and so on. And the journey continues. This is not the end because the next step we want to commercialize this. Right? We need to commercialize this. So we're talking about lower cost, and we're talking about not just the fresh seasoning, but processed uh, seasonings and so on. So we're going to go into the next phase. So we want to invite persons to be part of this. Those of you, again, who can uh, want to volunteer as facilitators and so on, sure. And of course, if you want to uh, volunteer, uh, $5, $10, laptops, we're taking those things. The next stage is to commercialize this. And of course, there are some more uh, vocational skills that people have expressed an interest in. And thank you for the opportunity from the Ministry of Agriculture to keep on with the collaboration. But I know we also want to go into food so that the seasonings could flow into the food. All right? So that's our next stage, um, commercializing what we're doing and, and, thank, and food. So I want to thank you for the opportunity for just sharing a bit of what we are about, what we've done, what we've accomplished. It's more than a year now we've been doing this. And this is really uh, a milestone for us. So God's blessings upon uh, the young men, the 15 young men and their families. God's blessings upon the community of Embakade, to the national community and to the diaspora and all of WAC 90.1 listeners and viewers. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mrs. Doyle, for your vision, your passion, love, grace, encouraging words, inspiration to all present. May God continuously bless and keep you. Thank you. Give her a round of applause, please. She deserves it. This morning, we have a special song from the DJ entitled Moving On, sung by our very own Maximus Dan. All right, that's okay. We are live, so we have a little technical difficulties at times. All right, so at this time, we would like to invite the Deputy Mayor of San Fernando, Dr. Ferry Hussein, to address and launch this program. Let's hear it for Dr. Hussein. Good morning, all. So, distinguished members and specially invited guests, Mrs. Madonna Doyle, CEO and founder of the Foundation for Healing Conversations, and members of the board of the Foundation for Healing Conversations, Mr. Nigam Joseph, Councillor for Springville Paradise, Ms. Glenda Borrell, representative of the Ministry of Agriculture, members of the Embakade community, and listening audience and work. 90.1. On behalf of the San Fernando City Corporation, His Worship the Mayor, Junior Regrello, myself, Deputy Mayor, and members of the Council, I would like to express my sincerest gratitude to the Foundation of Healing Conversations, led by Mrs. Madonna Doyle, for your inspiring and humble work 
and for the involvement of the wonderful members of the Embarcadere community. The foundation of Healing Conversations organization is guided by its mission, which is to transform communities through healing conversations. When we think about communities, they are simply groups of people sharing common interests, concerns, or identities. The community we are here to focus on is the Embarcadere community. It comprises of roughly 1,500 persons and of many youths and young individuals with their own hopes, dreams, and fears. The Embarcadere area has moved on from a history of being a widespread landfill to a vast community that is developing more and more over time. This community has produced many well-known, accomplished persons. One such person is Mr. McCasey Peters, who was able to graduate with his undergraduate degree from the University of the West Indies, and then went to achieve a master's in strategic leadership and management. There is also prominent Miss, McClash Miss Louise McClashey, founder of the Embarcadere Travelers, who has been able to pull young persons interested in the arts and culture to play instruments such as drums and speak the language of dance. Miss McClashey was awarded the San Fernando City Award for her contribution to culture in 2018. And last but definitely not least, Ms. Roxy Singh, our chairperson here today. There are, only, there are also many athletes produced throughout the years. These are only some of the several persons from within the Embarcadere community that have been able to make a difference and that continue to make not only their community, but San Fernando proud. As it relates to projects, that are currently taking place within the Embarcadere community. One major project that has been embarked upon by our government, led by the Member of Parliament for San Fernando West, the Honorable Faris Alwari, is the Waterfront Redevelopment Project. While at, this while at present, this project has been able to provide empo employment to members of this community, the intention is that projects like these, coupled with initiatives such as those by the Foundation of Healing Conversations, is to achieve sustainable, self-sufficient individuals and families that can be a substantial part of community betterment. It is the duty and responsibility of our local government representatives to continually ensure that we action putting people first in every decision that we make. Your hardworking councillor is always looking for employment. Within Bakadeh, we are almost at the stage of fully reopening the dog pound. And this move, too, has allowed us to provide employment to members of this community and which will further expand developments and add to activity traffic within the community, therefore engendering entrepreneurship. To promote a healthy community, one aspect is our plan to expand our recycling program with direct benefits therein. We would like to effect a shift towards future-oriented thinking. It is therefore easy to see what the Foundation for Healing Conversations and the San Fernando City Corporation meets, that is to improve the quality of lives of individuals within communities. I want to remind the Embarcadere community that we are here to stand with you and to support you. We strive to see a healthy Embarcadere community, an empowered Embarcadere community. The intervention process by the Foundation of Healing Conversations commenced with discussions with members of the community followed by implementation of activities such as learning about entrepreneurship attitudes and practices in agriculture. Today we celebrate these young men who saw an opportunity, made a decision, took the necessary actions and persevered through even when there were no handouts or immediate gain. An unwavering dedication is a reason we are able to observe this progression from one phase to the next, 
namely the initiation of agribusiness of varying scales. With this in mind, I would like to encourage good neighbors, residents, advocates, and other well-wishers of the wider San Fernando community to be part of this venture in any manner possible, be it time to facilitate training or mentorship, sharing of talents or treasure. Congratulations to the young men and their families, to the community of Embakadeh who have begun that journey and who have made that move to improve their lives. We salute you. In the words of Maximus Dan, sometimes in a man's life, you can't stay in one place forever. You have to make a move to see your way in order to improve, to reach the highest heights. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We have some lyricists in this place, though. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dr. Hussein, for your time here with us. It is greatly appreciated. So, the song that we were going to introduce before, let's hear it. Maximus Dan, the name of the song, Moving On. Yeah. Yeah. Ha! Well, sometimes in a man's life. Sometimes in a man's life, you can't stay one place forever. No, no, no. Sometimes you gotta get up and make that move in order to improve, to reach the highest of heights. Bye. 
What a very inspirational and powerful song. I hope that you all take the words in very seriously. Next on the agenda, we have the prayer and dedication of this harvest done by none other than Mr. and Mrs. Doyle. Please, let's hear a round of applause to welcome them. Let's pray, please, as we dedicate the harvest. Shall we stand? Father God, we thank you for the fruits of our labor. We thank you for fertilizing, for blessing, for planting, and bringing it to life. We do not take these things for granted. We ask that these go and bless the partakers. And we ask for much more harvest to bring food, to bring finances, and to bring purpose to the lives of all these participants. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you very much, Mr. Doyle. At this time, we will humbly call upon the community collaborator to offer the vote of thanks and any further announcements which she may have to offer. So let's hear it for our very own hardworking Mr. Nigel George. Yeah, pleasant morning. Okay. Uh, firstly, I would like to thank Mrs. Doyle, Mr. Doyle, for the vision that they had. Mrs. Doyle, it reminds me of the late Martin Luther King. I had a dream, All right? And Mrs. Doyle's dream did come true. She came into the community of Mbakade. She came, she got the youths together, and believe me, they are together. Always a small group of young men, they are powerful young men. I would like to give thanks to one person in particular. Someone who, anytime he reaches out to her, she at least hear our cry. She helps. Um, Ms. Valdez. We approached Ms. Valdez late in the game. I will have to say late in the game. And we wanted some stuff because we were not always getting what we wanted. Ms. Valdez, she was there for us. Thanks, Ms. Valdez. Right. I'm not a person much with words as I could see, but um, this first phase of this program, it was well appreciated by the young men, the participants. We'll be moving up to a second phase shortly, you know, and want to continue our support from the councillor, from the business community, from the residents of Mbakade, please continue assisting and helping us in our endeavors. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Nigel George. I would like you all to take a look at the paintings, the drawings, sorry. Sajenki, Pata, great work. Give it up for these drawings. <laughs> Color and life. So at this point, we would like 
All right, so as we bring this program to a close, sorry, we'd like to take this opportunity to thank the community of Embakade and Environs for accommodating this event this morning. Thank you to all of our special invited guests who took their time off from their busy schedules to be here with us this morning. We do appreciate you all. Round of applause to you. Thank you. Thank you for also accepting me as your MC this morning, and I will do it all again. Thank you. So now we would like to invite you all to view and participate in our produce sales table. And also to the members of the media, feel free to take a tour as well. Have a blessed day, everyone. God bless. Thank you for listening on WAC Radio 90.1 FM. Blessings. Today we say, be merry, do merry, and welcome to Mary. Mary represents the vision to transform Embarcadere, spearheaded by the Foundation for Healing Conversations. To appreciate Mary, we have to step back and get to know and understand the entity that is at the heart of all of this. The Foundation for Healing Conversations is a non-profit organization registered in 2016 that seeks to adopt healing conversations to transform communities. We recognize the transformative power of communication and just like Jesus' encounter with a woman at the standby, we too seek to adopt this model of a multi-layered, unique and practical communication approach called a healing conversation. What does that look like? Picture a thriving community with healthy relationships, nurtured through communication encounters that focus on mending, restoring, and transforming situations that have been broken between individuals, within families and groups. That's it. But what makes us different? What can you expect of us? Compassion, service, and intent. We seek to demonstrate Christ in aligning our words, our walk, and our work. The Foundation for Healing Conversations is the brainchild of Madonna Doyle, and on this journey, a board of trustees has come alongside. Reverend Dr. Benjamin Agard, Mr. Bernard Mitchell, Father Urban Hodlin, and Mr. Jesse Batiste, and the small management team, Sharon Maxime, Jamelia Aberdeen, Elton Doyle, Sharon Mahabir, and others who started but have moved on, Noeline Husbands, Portia Kwamina School, and Alicia Siden. The foundation builds on earlier accomplishments, such as small workshops for communities, churches, and for NGOs. But this work, Healing Conversations in Embarcade, is our most ambitious undertaking to date. After a year of listening, researching, dialoguing and designing together with our community collaborators, we have developed a holistic intervention for transforming lives in Embakade. It is from Embakade that the vision Mary came about. Mary stands for make Embakade safe, experience God, respect one another, and involve yourself in business. This vision is being expressed through training in attitudes and the mindset in vocational skills and spiritual formation, meaning applying biblical principles to daily living, to work, and to their interactions with one another. Here for you to see is the harvest of seasonings, thyme, scythe, shadow belly, and parsley, and celery. But more than that, this harvest is the culmination of the planning and strategizing that I have shared before and the work of 15 young men and their families. 
These 15 young men have become the foundation of this community transformation. Dwight Weeks, Latrell Daniel, Carlon Valley, Fionn Makano, Mikel Bascom, Keegan Veronique, Handel Moranzi, Jarel Mores, Renison Wilson, Nikosi Bettles, Cameron Bacchus, Jelani Morrison, Shaquille George, Sujenki Pato, and Gabriel Simpson under the leadership of Nigel George. They planted out the 43 half barrels guided by Mr. Shalim Shah of the Ministry of Agriculture. Harvested and sold their produce to the very supportive residents of Mbakade and encouraged by the community collaborators Nigel George, Ibo Joseph, Apostle Renald Mondesir, and Mr. Tommy Joseph. Many persons have come together to demonstrate what you see today the power of leadership, vision, service, collaboration, and communication in transforming a community. The journey continues. We know that more residents have signaled their interest to become involved. The next phase is coming. To neighbors, businesses, other organizations in South, the nation, and the diaspora.